Welcome everybody to my course tour for EDLT Research in Blended and Online Learning. This course focuses on in-depth research and academic writing for graduate level students. And it's meant for them to either uh, get an article published, which would be primo, and or to develop the literature section of their thesis. It has six goals and they're listed across the top. This is the 10,000 foot view of the course, so all you're going to see listed below is the fact that this is, consists of five units, what the titles of these units are, and the length, and it is a full semester length course. The other thing I wanted to share with you on the course map has to do with the graphic syllabus because this is what the students see for the course. And so let's scroll up here a little bit. And once again, the units, the five units are here, the goals are listed here, and then the activities that align and support the goals are listed across the various units. And the graphic syllabus gives the students that 10,000 foot view of the course as well, and what they'll be doing in each unit to support their learning outcomes. The other thing I'm going to do, just so you get to see a more detailed view of a unit, this is unit two, the publishing landscape. And once again, the goals are across the top. They stay the same across the course. And then we have the learning objectives for each unit, the measurable learning objectives. And you'll see that the course goals that align with these learning objectives are listed to the left, the activities. And I want to note the numbering of the activities, which I think is a great strategy for organizing the course yourself and students as well when they're asking you questions about certain activities if they have something about this particular activity they can use the 2.4 numbering system and there would not be confusion about what assignment are you asking me about but it, it shows here's the learning objective that is supported by this activity which goes back to the course goal that alignment piece there are the points, the materials and resources, and students don't see this particular layout of the course. This is for the course designer, but it is, I found this to be, yeah, it's a little tedious, but it really or it helps you organize your course and you've basically paid it forward and done at least 50% of the work because then you, when it's time to get into Canvas, you basically know exactly what you're doing. Um, then the interactivity component, student to student, student to content, student to instructor. Of course, the time allotments that are envisioned and the assessment piece. So this can act as a checklist for the course developer um, as well as um, just being a great organizational tool. With that, I'm going to minimize that and let's go to the home page of the course. And we'll come back and look at the modules and greater depth. Let's hope it loads here. Here's the home page of the course which will we'll, we'll be changed at the beginning of every unit, but the students are clearly directed the five things they need to do to get started in the course. See we have a little numbering problem here and the instructor contact information which stays on the home page throughout the course even though the content up above will change depending on the unit and then scheduled events will always stay there because this course has a scheduled event at the beginning of every unit. Syllabus is in a Google Doc so it's going to be linked which is something you're familiar with. So both the syllabus and the schedule are Google Docs so that they can be updated in real time. I am a great believer in announcements so I do direct students to please check the announcements regularly uh, at least on a weekly basis. I'm not going to bother to go there. Let's head over to modules. This course is uses modules. Not all courses do. I've seen some designs in Canvas for our courses or at NMSU that do not use the modules, but I happen to be a user or an enthusiast for the modules. Course resources will always be here at the top. I do include, once again, 
a course goal, goals and objectives overview. You may have seen these in some of our OTL courses. And it is organized to, uh, here are the course goals and then the numbering system that I use throughout the course and learning objective 1.4 supporting course goal one. Once again, it's to provide that snapshot for students um, about the primary learning objective supporting the course goals. And they will have a better understanding of why they're doing what they're doing and how the components of the course actually fit together. Going back to the modules, there is a getting started module, which is a little over um, two weeks. So it takes up weeks one through three, basically. And in the getting started module, I include the welcome letter that students receive before they come, uh, before the course officially begins, the graphic syllabus that I showed very briefly in the Excel document is here. It's probably going to take a little while to load, but just, oh, there it is. Voila. I do need to PDF it so students uh, can have the option of downloading because right now it's just a JPEG from the Excel document. I'm going back to modules. The syllabus, of course, the schedule. The, I have a um, summative assessment piece here with the syllabus quiz to meet the practicum requirement, introductions discussion, which you would expect to see in every course uh, that's an online learning course for sure, this course orientation meeting, the tech toolkit that they'll need. And then because they're spending part of unit one on research basics, they have um, some research reading and viewing to do and a basics discussion. The thing that's probably a little different about unit one is the fact that they take a research and self-confidence surveys because they are in a research team. This is to help them identify like interested classmates and people with different strengths and weaknesses in the research and writing. And they'll be able to actually see the uh, survey responses. And all the assignments have rubrics. Some, most of the rubrics are all the criteria are listed here and then it's either a leveled system of you know 100%, 75%, or it's an all or none in that instance. Boy, that changed quickly. And here is one of my formative evaluation activities per the practicum. And in the preview mode, since this is a published activity, I don't want to pretend like I'm actually taking it. But in the preview mode, um, here we go. Here are the courses, and it follows, as you can see, the strongly agree, agree, disagree, strongly disagree format. Try to keep it reasonable that you can quickly get through this, so hopefully students will be able to get through the first 10 questions pretty quickly, and then if they, hopefully they would have some feedback about Unit 1, learning activities. What would you keep the same and why? And for Unit 1, what would you change and why? What the research shows on surveys is if they're manageable time-wise uh, in terms of numbers of questions and quality of responses that survey takers are more likely to take the survey. All the units have an overview, which are formatted exactly the same. So hopefully this one will load quickly here. I'm going to stop the recording. Okay, so here is the formatted template for the overviews. They're consistent throughout the course. That gives the very basics, a little intro, as you can see, course goals and the learning objectives, which were mapped out, cross-referenced. So I, I do bring in the information from the course map here. Try to make that alignment piece transparent to students over and over and over again. Uh, you know, number of points, time, and they can use this as a checklist and it parallels the schedule. Once again, the numbering of the assignments, which is really handy. Whereas in unit one, it was more about everybody getting into the course, understanding the course, uh, forming, uh, building those relationships as a class. 
This unit is much more focused on the research teams gelling. Uh, they do the contract. They establish um, collaborative spaces that they're going to be sharing research uh, channels or their collaboration channels for where they're going to be sharing resources. And um, they go out and investigate potential places or maybe they actually identify a place where they're going to be aiming to get an article published and they have their team paper proposal and how their individual efforts are going to contribute to the final research team paper. And the, throughout the course, the research teams meet every unit, uh, two, three, and four, with the instructor and more if needed, in addition to our class meetings at the beginning of every unit. And with that, I'm close to 11 minutes. I was hoping to get done in 10. But uh, I'm going to end it right here, and thank you for viewing my course tour.